So we're getting ready to invite our special closing speaker to the stage. Uh, I have everything here with me, actually, so I'm going to... Uh, I just want to share that this is a really special talk, and it's worth the wait. I'm so happy that we could have Sanaz here share her story, because she has such a unique perspective. So I want to tell you a little bit about Sanaz Yashar, our closing speaker. And uh, I hope that she's getting the presentation and everything. So please give me, okay, yes, it's happening, good. So meanwhile, I'll tell you a little bit about Sanaz's background. Sanaz uh, grew up in Iran as a Jewish person, part of a Jewish family. And then she moved with her family to Israel. So she became Iranian Israeli, which is a complicated identity in of itself. Senaz spent many years in the intelligence services and in 8200 uh, serving Israel, and she has really special stories to share with us today from both perspectives of the intelligence field. In fact, she's going to talk to us about the fog of war and how state sponsored attackers are using not just cyber attacks, but also psychology and information warfare to influence people. So this is the place where information operations meet cyber operations, and it meets all of us in our day-to-day -day lives. It's something that we all actually have been exposed to. It's what the new battlefield looks like, and I think she is almost ready. And let's start by... Uh, giving her a round of applause to make sure that she's got a good atmosphere, good energy. Senaz made a very special effort to be here. By the way, I didn't tell you, she also likes Thai boxing. So watch out. She's a really, really special lady. Senaz, are you almost ready? Moments away. What a fantastic closing speaker we have with you today. Please give it up for Senaz Yashar. Wow. Woo. Senaz, thank you so much for being here thank with us. Thank you so much. Please, this is your spot. This is your audience. This is your stage. Thank Take you. us away. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you, Karen. After this opening, I would say that maybe I would pass the brief because it's going to be down from here after your open. It's going to be only up because you have the boots to kick ass. <laughs> all right. So, hello. All, I'm a little bit excited to see you all here. It uh, has been maybe two years that I haven't been seeing audience. Even it's not completely full, but I was uh, connected online to the site and I saw hundreds of people. So why I'm here today, and thank you for the opportunity besides uh, uh, accepting. Uh, myself, I'm here to talk to you in a, about something not very s like he, that you used to hear in B sides. It's not that technical because I know that you're a crowd of hackers, um, but it's not also something very you know spiritual and ruchniki and that stuff. So I'm here to talk to you in, about something in between. I'm going to tell you in the beginning. I don't have all the answers, but I have, hi, a lot of questions. Here, the reverser, the reverser, my reverser, she just came in, which is good. I feel very confident when she's in the room. Um, what, we are talking, what we are going to talk about is the fog of war and diverse information operation in modern warfare. Why I choose that, uh, why I chose that uh, expression, fog of war, I, I really hope that you would understand at the end of this presentation and you know would be happy to hear you hear about it so what we are going to talk about is to be on the same page to talk a little bit about terminology and the spectrum of influence operation because everybody has a kind of other phrasing when it comes uh, to influence operation then i talk about very briefly about why why we are seeing more and more stuff like that. Um, we are going to dig in a little story to, to set the ambience, uh, to get into the hardcore. Then real life examples from our own neighborhood, but also uh, from around the world, which would uh, include Russia, China, and Iran, uh, and maybe even more. Uh, we talk just a minute about the future, or maybe about not that future. I don't believe in, you know, prediction for the next year. I think 
you can see maybe two months in the cyber world, not that much, and two months is also not very, right, not very promised. Uh, then uh, we would talk about what can be done. Uh, so any question we have, you can, you know, I think I can handle that. You can just shout it out and we would uh, get it. Terminology. This is also a little bit new for me. So when we talk about coordinated inauthentic behavior, we talk about um, accounts in social media, but also others that are having a suspicious behavior and kind of conducting a certain message, not always with a content, like retweets, right? Or likes. So this is more like a marketing, like legit marketing world. And then we have propaganda. Propaganda is not a very new expression. There are years of years of propaganda. There are people talking about in, in the Bible, uh, it was talked. But uh, propaganda is already intentionally conducting a certain message. Then we get to this information. What is this information? Is conducting that message using what we call fake news. So misinformation, disinformation would be the closest to fake news. And what is misinformation? Misinformation, and sorry mom, this is exactly what my mom does, because unintentionally she amplifies false information, right? She doesn't have really bad intention, but this is the period of people that actually continue to send that WhatsApp message, uh, funny WhatsApp messages. Uh, it's the misinformation, and there was a lot of misinformation also about COVID, right? So the question would be what is intentionally and what is the actor actually intended to message from here on, and what is unintentionally amplifies like aftershocks after the earthquake. The next one is a graph we put together in FireEye Mandiant. Um, in order to a little bit simplify the, this complicated world, uh, because when something is so much complicated for us, and this is a problem that we actually see more and more when it comes to this information, we try to escape, right? And uh, this one is a little bit to kind of show you that we have um, misinformation and disinformation on the left side, which is much more familiar to what we all know, right? Um, the actor, when he already wants which goals he wants to achieve, he has so many platforms and like 50 shades of disinformation that he can choose from. And I tell you a secret, most of the time he uses more than one. So getting to the left of this axis, you can see more and more um, adopting and but just playing the, the game, right? Adopting to the social media and understanding how social media does and doing the right hashtag. Uh, and just be cool and TikTok and all the etc. Getting to the right, you can see it comes, uh, it becomes less and less legit and more and more cyber, RRR, right? Uh, what does it mean? That you try uh, to post non, um, authentical news and messages intentionally. Sometimes you do, you do it with the, your account that you just put, and there is a certain success you can achieve, but sometimes you hack into the legit news site. Just imagine tomorrow morning, you just wake up and you see a very disturbing title in, uh, I don't know, Ynet. Hmm, it actually happens every day, <laughs> but it's our life, <laughs> right? So um, the, the next after that, we call it doxing. What means that you hack, there is a whole cyber operation behind uh, uh, this operation that you hack to a certain environment, you take all the secrets of the environment, sometimes you manipulate them and sometimes you don't, sometimes you manipulate just a little of them, and then you release. Hack and leak. What is the most famous event you know? 2016, right? The um, um, elections for US. DNC hack and hack and release, and you already know that it was uh, done by Russians, right? And the last one, I actually um, added it just in the morning because I'm seeing it just 
during the, the last months, uh, month, one month, is uh, when you do that kind of uh, cyber warfare we thought, it's going to get done, like cyber physical explosions, uh, railways stop going, planes are crashing, but it's not just enough. You convey the message to influence the opinion of public. Sometimes in the enemy space, in Farsi, and sometimes in your space, right? In other languages. So we have a combination here, like we have all the goods all together at the uh, last phase of this um, axis. If it's going to develop more than that, I think yes. If I can imagine what's going to be next, I prefer not. So let's go further. Why they do that? First, easy, asymmetric war, right? Sorry for the uh, uh, Sa'al language, but uh, when the war is asymmetric and when both sides or three sides, they are not capable of the same stuff when it comes to uh, weapons, so you answer to, you win the technology by other means. So the way you conduct the message, the way you achieve the goals can be also conducted not by soft means, right? By uh, publications. I just heard, thanks to Matan from my team, I just heard a Nasrallah a brief, uh, I think three days ago. Um, which uh, was very surprising to me. He says why he thinks they won the second Lebanon war with Israel. And he says this is all because of the news and communication and media. So everybody already knows that the media is, has the power to change maybe the, if the real, if there is a real, right? The real uh, effects of a certain um, conflict. The next, I want to call it a zero day. So there was days that uh, people come to me with the disinformation or fake uh, information operation, uh, and I was said, this is not cyber. The cyber I know, coming out from an elite unit, yes, is using zero days. It's a non-click way of accessing your phone or your computer. This is a zero day when it comes to the biggest vulnerability in society. These are human minds, right? This is the most vulnerable part of the conflict. In the time that you, are, you can be the best in the front lines, right? You have the best uh, weapons and you have the best uh, aeroplanes and you have the best submarines, you can get affected in the home front. And this is exactly what they are trying to do. I'm going to show you a, a, an example that the most the strongest we get in the front lines um, against our enemies, um, we are still very weak in our home front. So this is the zero day here using. And the last one, is that it actually opposes a capability for the actor, for the operator, uh, for a plausible deniability. Because when it's good, they can say maybe it's us, it's ambiguous, right? So it would serve a kind of deterrence, and when it's bad, it wasn't me, right? I, 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 I remember the quote of Putin, cyber hack? us hacking, like, you know, during the uh, talks with Biden. So he has a very good sense of humor, of course. Please don't take the light off. Um, okay, a little story, very quick one. This is back in December 2016, and I promise you this is the oldest uh, uh, evidence you're going to see. Do you know what is that? Anybody identify? Back in December 2016, a Ministry of Defense of Pakistan, what is special in Pakistan? They are a nuclear country. Right, they are a nuclear power. He tweets in a reply to an article was published in AWD News to Israeli 
Ministry of Defense, that don't threaten me, we are a nuclear country as well. Everybody was like, what is that? First, Israel is not a nuclear company. We don't have any nuclear. We just have a you know, textile factory, maybe some textile factory. Second, what is that tweet, right? Apparently, what happens that in uh, just the, uh, in that article, they actually quoted by mistake a tweet that was inauthentic tweet uh, from Israeli government that threatened Pakistan that if you send soldiers to Syria, so be aware I have nuclear bomb. Very funny, right? <laughs> but the tweet of the Ministry of Defense of Pakistan as was actually real, he was responding to that. Anyways, thanks Allah in this case, or the God of Cyber, the Ministry of Defense of Israel understand that something ha bad happened and uh, very fast they actually react to the tweet that it was all inauthentic and none of it, it, this is true. What we understand lately in FireEye, la not lately, later that year, Here? Right yes. But but my good side is my right side. <laughs> so all the photographers, please go right. Thank you. Okay. Don't look at this side. Okay. Um, so later on, back to the story. Uh, we attribute the whole network. It's a large, large network in many languages. I saw it in Arabic, Hodu, Hindu. Um, I saw it in Farsi and in English, and we call it Liberty Front Press, and we attribute that network, which is globally spread it, to a certain entity in Iran. You can call it cover company, but it's a company that we call it International Union of Virtual Media. Oh, Sazmane, Sedosima, Iran. Why it matters? Uh, after we do it, Facebook, see our article, and they understand that it's kind of whole fake thing, and they go very fast and they remove 652 pages from Facebook and some domains. So you see, okay, that article was in 2016. The seizing of the pages was in 2018. Okay, so you say, okay, that's it. Completed, mission completed, that organization already gone. This is, I'm going back to the spot. Uh, this is uh, 2020. 2020, mean, uh, the Justice News, the Department of Justice in US, they actually published that they seized 92, I believe, right, 92 uh, different domains related to IRGC. I can tell you, and there are maybe other um, security company in uh, this uh, room that they know, that some of the domains they were seized, they are still related to that organization. 2016, 2020, four years of operation, not that much cost, why they have to stop. Recent examples. Do you recognize this? I'm, uh, Hebrew is not my mother language, as, he, as uh, Karen told, but even for me, it's kind of weird. Even one of you tell me, Sahal ibet shlita, pachat ve'i sheket norai, bekarim ba'arim, ha'pitaron ho'livroach ha'chul. This is not my report, my company's report. This is the fake reporter, uh, kind of non-benefit organization I just found, and they found a, a, I like it because it's in Hebrew, a network of Hebrew messages in, in Twitter that they are trying to use, do you remember that right place of the axis, that they are trying to amplify and to sow uncertainty and fear in the Israeli crowd during the Shomer Chomot. What is really actually interesting, the only thing is interesting, and it's also because of Matan, they told me, Israel under attack, hashtag. Israel under attack was supposed to be good for us, right? This is the hashtag we used. They used it to 
show fear. Who is going to be victim of this messaging? You? No, it's my mom again. But uh, when it's not that effective to people that are more understanding, sometimes it's effective to people that are not very aware. Also, another thing I want to tell you. There is one thing that we can be very proud of us or ourselves in Israel. I actually don't know how it happens, but it happens. We are not that sensitive when it comes to inauthentic information operation. Like, as a nation, we discover it fast. <laughs> I don't know how it happens. Maybe because we are a small country, we all know each other. We are very nosy. We try to understand what is behind that. We are, a, we are a nosy nation, what to do. So we are even more immune than other countries I saw. Um, this is uh, the first. But little by little, we are seeing that it's going and actually getting more and more intense. What does it mean but intense? We are observing espionage actors, like legit, legit espionage actors, um, changing TTPs and getting into more and more information operation uh, sphere. How they do that? They actually hack news sites. Recently, I saw a news site is not that big anymore. They, act, they hack academy sites and NGOs and think tanks, and they post their own content. Sometimes they spoof email addresses. Like, they have the whole phishing stuff. They spoof emails, and on the name of yourself or others, I'm going to go show an example, they would send an article to a certain news site in order to publish. We saw them published. And the last one I like, because it's closed kind of the circles, that information operation actually amplifies backward the cyber operation as well. Because that leaked data, that inauthentic kind of documents, used as lures to further phishing. And what I told you, the zero day is that there. Yes, right, right. Right, okay. Maybe it means something when I'm always left. Don't forget our audience all around the world. Ah, okay. Thank you, Karen. Uh, meanwhile, in our neighborhood, who knows that we have um, this outed war with Iran, right? So we said it's a cyber war. They tried to hack our water system. But it's not just cyber war. It's in every platform, it's in the sea, it's in the air, it's with drones, right? It's, it's explosive, you're hearing it all over. Uh, but it's also in cyber. This is actually one of the naughty ones I actually like before we are going to the second one. We call it the impersonator campaign, like Terminator, but not. Uh, these two accounts you're seeing here, which is uh, Maria Livengood. Um, She's a legit uh, parliament member of US. The right, wait, it depends on here. The right one is the real one, and the left one is the fake one. Um, do you see any difference? You're old enough to see? There is no difference. The content is the same. Everything is the same. The only thing that is different is the account itself, right? For months, Iranis, Iranian government impersonated real people in governments or in political groups. They just got their own post and they post it again pictures of the children. Um, everything they like. They, she even talks about a receipt of a certain food, I don't know, something like that. It's like everything. And little by little, they start to change a little bit the messaging, right? She started to talk about, oh, maybe she's not that happy with the recent Israeli uh, decisions about Iran. And maybe she thinks that 
we are, Israel is not referring to a, a Palestine in a, in a best way they can do. But kind of very little, I like it. It's like a cosmetic stuff. It's not those information operations we saw like hungry children and, and like anti-Semitism and stuff. This is like a art, right? They even change the picture that she looks angry or she looks happy with like deep fake. So this, what, what, when we discovered it, when uh, she tried to send a letter to a certain news to be published, that news actually checked the fact with us and we understand that there is a whole network behind it. There is a whole network in many, many languages. I saw even they, also, there was also people in Israel, um, I even remember one name, uh, that they were impersonated. Next one, it's getting closer to what you all heard. What was the biggest news in uh, last year, December 2020, when we were all in uh, one of the lockdowns, I, I stopped counting. Sheer bit stuff, right? A certain insurance company that is not now much more famous than it was before, uh, got hacked. And all the PII of, all, of a lot of our friends, thousands of evidences was out. They were claiming that they are cyber crime and they wanted money, but they didn't get the money, so they put it out. Are they cyber crime? Did they want money and they didn't get it? So I can tell you now by sure that they are not cyber crime. There are a certain Iranian group that we call them Ankh 2428. We know this group from end of 2018. How we know that group? Because um, the investigation um, actually um, continued and we started to get some forensic evidence from that investigation in Virus Total and other places. And we saw that those hash, hashes you can see, and some of those infrastructure, we already know them as a malware family we call Salty Boar. This is a kind of pig I didn't know also. Um, and it's actually very capable malware. And for years, they are doing, also in Israel, espionage activity. Very covered espionage activity. So what happened that in December 2020, they started to hack and leak? If it doesn't, and later, later you heard also about KLS, another company got affected. Um, also, I want to tell you, that we saw also not just that, a few uh, linguistic evidences that we, I, I, I could know at the beginning that it was like, you know, Persian guys, uh, not very educated, try to talk like English to Farsi and Farsi to English. You can see it here, it's really funny. Um, we are still on our word, this is Moru Harf Mun Sadim. And uh, this kind of word that you don't have any parallel to that in other languages. So I can tell you that it's a way of this actor. Somebody have to chain me here. Okay, just I'm, I'm going to be here and stay like this. Okay, this is a, a way that this actor started from covered com kind of uh, stuff to do it much more overt. There is always a possibility like... Um, Chinese or North Korean kind of model that they did want the money, right? I can not completely say that it was from government and stuff, but uh, from certain information, we know that they hacked other spaces. We know they had much more information to leak than Sheerbit, but they didn't leak that. So where is that information? They passed it to their commanders. Next one, pay to key. Pay to key or the recent variant, Netform. Unique homemade, like a Persian carpet, ransomware. This we attribute to a, a certain uh, group, we call it Ankh 757. 
ANG 757 is a group actually active from 2016. In 2016, they hacked, uh, as we know, maybe they hacked more, one certain entity in Saudi Arabia. In 2017, they hacked two entities in Saudi Arabia and, and a, a little bit more in US. Just in 2020, they started to look at Israel as well. The whole hacking and the whole operation was an espionage operation. A very aggressive way of getting in, we call it smash and grab, and take it out, right? In, I, I remember one of their hacks in, in 4th of July, but in Australia, I think they did, didn't know that 4th of July is just in US, uh, that in 12 hours, the terabytes of data was exfiltrated out in the night, right? Um, so they started to, to appear here. We know a lot of uh, victims or potential victims, but we saw them for the first time that uh, their initial access was uh, from Amital. This is a third party that had access to other stuff. They started to doxing high profile targets. And if it's not enough, they also really wanted to look like cyber crime, right? And they have this uh, Twitter trolling, like, other ransomware accounts, and they have this nice, like the only thing they, they don't have here is like a skeleton, right, in the ransom note. Is it espionage? Is it cybercrime? Or is it for influencing the home front of Israel during that cyber war that was outed? We can discuss here or other, but there was a certain moment I remember that I understood, that maybe I'm mistaken, that it, is, it has to do with influence operation. We tried to engage one of the actors related to this uh, actor. This actor also known as uh, uh, Fox Kitten, I believe, by other uh, security vendors. Um, we engaged one of the actors and we tried to see what we can buy from him. And he was very certain that he's not going to sell us anything that is opposed to Iran interest. Good hacker? No. Anyway, let's uh, move on. We are getting closer to the end. Uh, Russia. Russia information operation is not just something new that they just invented. They are the whole thing behind it, like we all have to learn from Russia. It's in doctrine of Russia for years. Um, I'm not that good in history, so, but for years you can see Russia conducting information operations with media and non-cyber one in the news and everything. But I wanna mention one campaign that I'm actually amazed by. We call it Ghost Writer. Ghost Writer is a campaign not related to our neighborhood, so it's much more fun to talk about others' problem, uh, un unlike the, uh, the two before. It's uh, targeting uh, Poland, Poland um, and other Eastern Europe country, Ukraine, Poland, um, I think it's also Belarus and uh, other countries there, which, uh, and it has like anti-NATO messaging. Um, they use several spoofed emails and accounts and they hack to the sites and they um, um, publish actually news that it's not right. Um, look at this one. They actually compromised into the government of Poland to, for officials. You, you know, if the government of Russia have access to government of Poland, I would say that is the, you know, the end of the game but not. They would use that access in order to publish on behalf of that officials, on behalf of that officials, more and more messaging. Like, they even have a very nice uh, uh, sense of humor, like they are publishing nothing that is re related to Russia. They are trying to get them, like, fight together, like Poland interfering Belarus. Um, which, I don't know, when it's going to be end. It's years of conducting uh, things. The last one I saw just, I think, in May this year. Look at this one here. 
they hacked to university, they published on behalf of university something. And here, which is very cool, we could finally, just in 2021, um, attribute or part of this group operation, uh, especially when it comes to infrastructure, to a certain uh, hacking group that is related to Russia, that we call it ANC 1511. ANC 1511 is already a group that has certain malwares that have a very special attack life cycle. They have a way to get in. They have at least three family uh, malwares that we call them. We can see Radio Star uh, and Half Shell they are using, but they also do those hacking and then give it to Ghostwriter and then Ghostwriter does what they does. We do believe that this actor is related to GRU. Here's the moment that we can see that if you are still safe. Um, about GRU, there are at least two actors that you should know about, right? This is the Sandworm team, that on one side they are been really taking off electricity and doing not pity stuff. And then the other thing, like as a break, they do defacement on approximately 100 websites in Georgia with that picture. This is the former president of Georgia. What they're trying to achieve, who is the audience, how they are going to measure themselves if they were successful or not, how they are getting more budget for the next year. I still don't know how it went goes. And APT28, I'm not going to talk about it that much. They are the most responsible one for the DNC Democratic uh, um, a group uh, hack in US, China. I think China is very different when it comes to information operation. Um, I chose to bring one example. This is the example I'm actually exp exposing for the first time. We haven't talked about it, and probably we are going to talk about it more next week, so stay tuned for the blog. Um, first, we see a lot of Chinese groups that are targeting media. This is the amount of Chinese group you can see on the right that are targeting in a portion media. Why they target media? Because they are the big brother. They have to understand what they are going to publish, but they also want access in order to publish themselves stuff. We actually have a blog on that, Breaking the News, Operation Target Media. So I, I invite you to read about it. The next one I'm going to talk is a certain actor that is active in our neighborhood, which is a kind of evolution of what we call APT27. APT27 uses a certain malware family that we call Focus Fjord. I know it sounds like Swiss, but it's Chinese, Focus Fjord. Focus Fjord is a, a certain malware, very complicated. It's actually a first stage, but it has also second and third stages. That uh, when it gets to your environment, it looks for the um, most important servers, and then it installs itself in the hard disk, and then it deletes uh, the C2 or other components from the hard disk, and it actually um, encrypts it in a registry. This is the registry key. On the left, you can see the value. On the right, you can see what actually means, right? So most of the variants we were looking at, thank you, Stav, <laughs> is uh, uh, actually one, two, three, right? One is the executable, and as you can see, eight is C2. Like, we understand after reversing it, this is why I thanked stuff because she reversed it. We understand what stand f these numbers stand for. On the right, you can see the same malware, the same registry values in Farsi. Deracht, Dalhost, Vasl Konin, Noscheedo. What is Deracht? 
the last is a tree. Okay, Dalhast, request. Like, what does it mean? It, it's not even close to the name or to the, what the value actually means. But why is it, why it is in Farsi? Why not? Why not? Why not? Because they could do one, two, three. We see a lot of stuff. False flag, False flag where? Where use they used Farsi? In Israel. They used Farsi, false flag in Farsi in Israel. Also in Uzbekistan. You can see more variants of the same factor. English, Farsi, Hindi. This misinformation, <laughs> this information is embedded in the code. What does it mean? This is the only value in their malware that is not encrypted. Because we heard so many curse from Yuri and Stop reversing the malware because it's hard to reverse it. But then we have these values that are not encrypted. So imagine that they got caught or something not really OK. You get to do forensic. There are people to do forensic. I'm not a forensic lady. And you do okay, the first thing you can see is the values. Even if you put it in the sandbox, this I know to do without a thing, the, you can see the values in Farsi and in Hindi. What do you think? Iranians again. What's new? Iranians hitting our critical infrastructure. What's new? We are in a lot of contracts with China and business and economic relations. So it's just a kind of safe way to blame or try to blame Iran. But what is funny, I'm just going back last time to the Farsi thing. That Farsi, to the Farsi speakers in the room, how many are there here? Just one, thanks, Raoult. Ah, here another one. That Farsi is a dictionary Farsi. It's not a Farsi that hackers use. Just imagine a hacker talk in a very polite way, right? Uh, I showed you the Ang 757 with the pay to key stuff, uh, full of Persian curse. Even the handles uh, in dark were, no, Darknet. There were so many bad words in Farsi that I actually felt like embarrassed. To investigate, that, to investigate that. And here you can see, oh, nice Farsi. This is my father's Farsi, OK? Uh, so you can see they tried. It's not very sophisticated, but it would show the immediate suspect, right, as I run, embedded in the code. What now? What is this? Do you know what is this? Nobody saw that? The, about yes, right. It's something about ministry. Ministry of Transportation in Iran. The date that I did a very nice yellow line, I'm very famous with my not direct uh, yellow lines, uh, down there, says uh, July 10, 2021. This is from July 10, 2021. And it says, Dear Minister of Transportation in Iran, your computers, systems, and also the computer system of railway company are under cyber attack. This is our message for the responsibles. Payetanra as gelimetan derastar nakonit. Now I have to find a way to translate it. This is a phrase, pitgam, right, in Farsi, that there is just in Farsi, and it means don't get more comfortable than you are. Don't take your foot out of your carpet. Just stay where you are. Don't get out. Everything in Farsi is related to some carpet. Um, what is this? Have you heard about railway in Iran stopped? 
Yes, you heard. Who is the audience? Who is the actor? I don't know. What is going to achieve? This is the future of cyber hacks, information. Is it effective? Probably yes. There are a lot of uh, propaganda now in Iran and strikes in Khuzestan, in Ahwaz, as you heard. Now what? I showed you a lot of examples. Some were very kind of intuitive. You could see like it everywhere, like everybody's talking about it. And some were embedded in the code, and some were embedded in somebody else's computer. They are everywhere. This is a fog of war. This is a war? Or this is our life? If it's everywhere, it's already war. This is going to be our life. We are know a lot of this information and information operation also about COVID, right? This is everywhere. So if it's that usual, we are still going to use it, the terminology as a warfare or something else. I don't have the answer. I know that I think there are red lines like everything in the world. If there is a red line, I'm not BB with the, you know, the red line to show you. Where is that red line? Where is that red line? So I do believe also that even if you want to stop it, I showed you like lots of seizing domains and um, closing accounts and, you know, no, no, no stuff. The day after, they are going to do it again. What is the real cost you can take from the operators? But maybe also it's a kind of clean kind of war. I like it, right? No soldiers get hurt. What can be done? So for the good people that in between, like my mom, right? That I don't want them to get affected by, by uh, fake news. I would say there would be maybe three best practices I saw during the last year. The first, communication. You win information operation by bringing the right information to the right people on the right media at the right time. Don't hide stuff, just talk about it, right? We, are, we saw a very actually successful, I believe, campaign in US, the U.S. during the last, uh, the last elections, four generals from four organizations all together talking to the crowd in the TV, right? No hacking, everything is safe, don't worry, there is no fake news. Or there was the Proud Boys, there was like an um, Iranian group trying to do misinformation, calling people in U.S., if you go vote for Trump, we are going to beat you. People actually was afraid. They're going out to the news and saying, ah, oh, they can do nothing to you. This is fake. Communication, communication, communication. Ladies are better than men in this world. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell that. So I really believe that we have to enhance communication around it. The second one, I just heard that Biden was uh, blaming Facebook, right? about why the vaccination was not as successful that he wanted, because there was a lot of misinformation uh, posted by Facebook accounts. Did you hear, have you heard about it? And it was like, Biden, he's the president of the biggest democratic company I know. He is talking to Facebook? Okay, what does it mean? That Facebook has the power now, at least like the president of US. So there is responsibility has to be taken by these platforms. They are doing a lot of good to the world, bringing us technology and bringing us communication everywhere. And we are not, you know, in de dependent to one or two channels. But they still have the responsibility to check the facts and to continuously look for inauthentic behavior. 
the last one is education. I heard, I don't know for sure that it's right, that I heard in Finland from the second or the third grade, they learn in the school, primary school, to ask questions about information they see in internet. I don't know if it's right, I prefer to imagine that it's right. And I think it's going to correct itself because I have two boys, nine and six, and they are much more aware than me when it comes to internet information. They look at something, ah, uh, it's not. Sometimes they're looking at really serious stuff in the news because I'm seeing news when they are still awake. And I'm, ah, it's a fake, right, mom? I'm, yes, fake, fake. Don't believe everything you see. So I believe that it's going to kind of correct itself and people, uh, because they are living in this room, in this world that is many challenge, channels and platforms on, of information, they would have to learn how to conduct and how to decide which information is right and which is not. Us being mostly analysts, this is what they teach us, right? In the units, how to triage data. I do believe that this has to be common knowledge. Question everything. Why? Thank you. This, on, this is a beautiful flowers for a beautiful and most importantly, brilliant. Right. Brilliant. Right side? Which side? <laughs> Thank you. you. Brilliant, Thank you. brilliant, and such a unique perspective. Now, it is uh, uh, besides tradition. Let's stay here. It's okay. Okay, throw it on the floor. Let's stay here. Okay. So now it's a B-sides tradition that the first gin, time... Gin, whiskey or water? Gin, whiskey. whiskey or water? Of course, whiskey. I came okay. Very good, packs. very good. A girl like me. So it's a B-sides tradition that the first time B-sides speaker gets to have a chaser with us on stage. And she did a fantastic job. Thank you. How do you say Lechaim in Farsi? Nushajun. Nushajun. And this is what's going to send us off to an amazing after party. Thank you, Sanaz. Thank you so much for joining us. That's it from us, everybody. This was our party. Jushanam. <laughs> I hope I say it correctly. Nusha Jun, Nusha Jun. You are so Ashkenaz. Shiva Sen. I'll see you out there at the party. And for those online, I'll see you next year. Till then, from Tel Aviv, Peace Sayonara. We love you. Thank you so much, everyone. I'll see you outside. Give up the same old dance.